Jordan subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan subjective. Jordan subjective perspective. <laughs> and we're rolling. We're good. Awesome. Went started off with the hike, and now we're here. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy day yesterday. Yeah, like Beautiful. ten miles. Beautiful Tim. experience. Tim tricked us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did that in Colorado. <laughs> really? And uh yeah, I, I realized his one mile equals four miles and uh yeah, I think we kind of noticed that yesterday as well. Point seven. I I genuinely believe we had point seven to go and then <laughs> me and fucking Bodri walked like <laughs> two miles, two miles probably. Said, yeah. And then we're we're literally like it's flat. We're good. Like we gotta be getting close. It wasn't it wasn't <laughs> that bad until it like until it got pitch black, and then like you couldn't see anything, and then that's when yeah. things started getting literally weird. walking up like a mountain. Because yeah. I was like right behind you, and mm-hmm. I had to just watch what you what kind of steps you took and just copy them. Otherwise, like I couldn't see right under me. Like I would have to just like visualize like what you were doing. Yeah, right. Because like yeah. you can only see right where the light is. Otherwise, nearly ate shit twice, <laughs> chipping off like a root. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> falling down the mountain but hey oh that'd be the worst yeah tim was kind of like our tour guide yeah he He definitely gave me a tour guide appeal man he just keeps going and i don't know what's in him but i i started walking like i started just going for stride length it reminded me of like i'm like what would a dinosaur do or like what would those those (laughs) fucking things in uh star wars like those things that they're like camels almost they like walk across i was kind of like imagining those i'm like i'm going for length Doing legs didn't help two days ago for sure. That really burned me out. <laughs> I feel like just lower core and like yeah. legs and butt and everything. Lower back hurt me so much. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Right. That backpack too. I think after we were done, it felt felt pretty good. I felt good until Tim was flying home on the Dude. way home. <laughs> I was in the front seat. And that's why I didn't fall asleep in the beginning. Uh-huh. I was just like, holy crap! Like I thought I drove fast, you know. And then this guy's driving like 80 on 30, mm-hmm. like on these farm roads, laughing at us, thinking like that it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, dude, like. It's not like yeah, it was a roller coaster. Because, like, yeah, because it was like, it was, they would say like 35 mile an hour turns. Actually, if you could pull that up a little bit closer. Yeah. Uh, if it, So they were saying like 35 mile an hour turns, and he's hit them at like. 50, 60. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then he started going like 65, 70, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, slow down. I think the more we like mention it, he thought like we were more like like pushing him to go faster, and we were kind of like joking, hinting like, yo, maybe slow down. <laughs> he was like, ha ha, ha. <laughs> 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 <pace> even more. <laughs> you guys aren't used to this. <laughs> Let me hit this even Telling faster. You. Step post hike adrenaline. I was oh, feeling yeah. it too. I'm like, I'm enjoying this. Like, I was actually enjoying it. And it was awesome. Man. You looked over at me at one point. You're like, Jordan, are you all right? I'm like, I'm scared as shit. <laughs> <laughs> the backseat must have been fun. I literally, like, accepted my death. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, this might be how I go out. Yeah. I was wondering why he made everyone wear seatbelts. Like, the back, too. Like, I'm uh-huh. cool with seatbelts and all, but, like, I've never really met really someone that, may, like, makes you wear them in the back. Maybe sometimes, like, moms, grandmas, mm. like, all sorts of that's so why I call him Uncle Tim. Uncle Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Before he started the drive, he goes like and, and like draws the cross on the steering wheel. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god. I mean, I does get he really? This. Yeah, he literally goes like this on the steering wheel. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Lord help us. <laughs> Lord be with this car. Because yeah. <laughs> <know? laughs> I'm going fast like, regardless. I'm, gonna go fast. <laughs> I'm certainly probably gonna go next week again. Really? Again, yeah. Same one, Here like seventh time again. Oh yeah, God. I'm gonna no, I'm gonna hit the go trail. Remember that scenic uh, point we went to? Uh-huh, that yeah. One, then from there hit Hamilton Hollow. Oh, the the waterfall then. Yeah. Okay, absolutely, I don't know. absolutely. I feel like there. if I was to go there again, I wouldn't do both. Like I'd just do one, you know, four or five. Miles. That was a, that was a lot of hiking. That was yeah. too much. I mean, I don't. It was cool. It was adventurous. The water part was cool, but like, that just, was not comfortable just, at all. Just like, the last I, part, I, I think, was very. Very strenuous. Yeah, because like, we were done stairs. for and it was dark, which is all good. I think we just could have prepared more, left earlier. The water and on. The water and on, it got hard. The water was not fun. The I mean, the water was, was fine in the beginning when it was just sandy, and then when it got into, like, big-ass rocks and we didn't have water shoes, mm-hmm. just stepping in between them, falling. 
You're like guessing too. And you bastards just throwing rocks at me, whoever it was. <laughs> what was it, May? Karma. What was it, May? <laughs> That's karma. <laughs> Sounds like it was you. Yeah, th- I got the big one at you. Someone threw it, and I nearly <laughs> felt this? like Who's I like this? fell down. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Good times. Good times. I just, I love, I love that. I don't know, just that state of mind of like getting up that hill and like, cause that was like a real struggle. That was like the most like physical, physically enduring struggle with like a reward at the end that I've experienced in a while. Yeah. And that was just that. The hike that in general. Yeah. Like that delayed gratification, like, and that's, to get away, like it was really important. I feel. Yeah, that's what I love about hiking. It's not the the way you know it takes. You know, it's very hard, but like the thing you reach at the end. That's the reward, and I, that's what I strive for. That's what I love. <laughs> like, sitting down in that car was, like, I've never been so grateful to just sit in a car, you yeah. know? Yeah. Head home. Like cool breeze. Not oh, perfect. <laughs> that was awesome. We're doing Colorado, right? This week? We should. We should. Yeah. We're planning. We're thinking about going to Colorado. Go to Colorado. First week of July. I'm going to find some cool places to hike there. Just how, how far are we from Colorado here? I think 10 hours. Okay, it's close, not too bad. Close, close to like that. Yeah, Have you guys been a lot? Three times a year at least. It's probably my favorite state. My yeah, favorite it's state. just my favorite state. Really? Uh, yeah. I think it, it has, it's going to be everyone's. I mean, it should be everyone's favorite state. Not just for, like, the fact that um, all the freedoms, but it's more like I think the people there are so, like, nice and laid back. But how so? I don't know. Everyone I've met there was just genuinely like down to earth in a way. Like they they don't hold any kind of grudge in any in any form. Like they're just all chill. Really? I mean that's very vague, but yeah, I feel like even in the street, anyone you meet, any server at a restaurant, any taxi or Uber driver, anyone at the airport, from the moment you get there, they're just cool. I wonder if like the people that move there, they're kind of like immigrants from other states that like have this this desire to be out in the mountains and usually people that like the mountains are really I mean, relaxed I think a chill big people part of it is like that but i think also like colorado natives are, are pretty cool like you know they're open to others coming in okay and, like living there visiting the place whatever it is i wonder if it's like the fact that they get to reconnect with nature so often and they're just yeah. like they're just think, that relaxes yeah. them that keeps I them think, grounded that's true it's, it's the clean think, air man mm-hmm. that has a good effect you know very positive effect on your mentality Mm. I think it's very important. That's why I would love Colorado. Honestly, just <laughs> being able to get out of your house and having, like, a view of a mountain rather than, like, a, a city or a metropolitan, like, area mm-hmm. makes a difference, like, different vibe to your day, you know? It's also, like, you can always get, like, find a getaway, like, in, in 30 minutes there. You don't have to, like, travel. I, I know a girl that lives there or, like, grew up there. She said you can get anywhere in the state within five hours. Yeah, that, too. I mean, I mean, Colorado's, mm-hmm. like, a square in a way, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> Wait, the, in the middle, like, everything's fine. The way I said five hours there, I was like, five hours. Like, is that is that the, the <laughs> is that what you were talking about yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I mean, said I have the surfer. I'm, I'm going to call him out in this, in this Okay. Session. If Yeah, if I do it, just, like, <laughs> just say it. Just cool, say it. Cool. Kill, 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 kill. I think when whenever we go to Colorado, we should go a little west of the Rockies. There's a lot of cool caves and deserty landscapes there. I did not think there you you could find these dunes. Like when you went like a couple weeks ago, I was pretty impressed. He went to this this place where there was like he's been there, literally sand dunes, and then you look like in the distance and there's mountains, and then you look in the distance there's like a water body and. I'm just like I tiny. I've been there but I don't remember the water body. You have to go deeper into the into the park. Oh really? Like I I didn't I don't dunes. know exactly but he yeah. took like a few Snapchat like stories of it and I was like I'd see a dune and then a mountain and then water within an hour time lapse and I'm like That's what awesome. Kind of landscape yeah. adds that. We literally hit a blizzard right like an hour after leaving the dunes. <laughs> yeah. It's everything. Yeah, Breckenridge. Besides <laughs> the ocean. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> There were oases too. I'm pretty sure, like deeper. And in you the went park. the summer. Uh, we. W- you mean when I went? Uh huh. This was like three weeks ago. Oh, and you hit a blizzard. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. It wasn't in that area, but like we're going a little north, and yeah. What are what are Colorado winters like? Are they pretty harsh? Pretty sure. Never really? been there in the winter, but uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I usually know, go in the summer. I think, I think Colorado's weather is misunderstood by a lot of people. I like you know Colorado has like crazy elevations in the mountains, but mm. on like your more flatter, lower elevated land like Denver or whatever, I think it's pretty normal. Like mm. if you go, like it's not gonna be like randomly snowing in, in the random time of the year. It could be like super nice, sunny, beautiful day. Go up like a ten ten k like footer, yeah. uh-huh. and it's like snowing up there. Which okay. is normal. Yeah, 13 and 14. But, like, yeah. it's actually, like, super nice, the weather there. It's not, like, ridiculous, you know? like Right. It's not like Missouri, you know? You're so people equate get, like, that, like, being at high elevation yeah. in the summertime. They're like, oh, it's snowing there. It's that's snowing, crazy. Yeah, okay. Like, it's not right. I don't know what you're talking about. Something that's interesting about this year is that they had a longer snow season. Because we were supposed to do Long's Peak in Colorado. It was, like, a 14er. And we couldn't do that because of, like, there was hella snow there, like probably to, probably to our shoulders. I don't know, but there's like a snowstorm like every every other day, so we couldn't do that. Oh That's wow! Why we went to do the sand, great sand dunes down south and made our way up, did a, a few hikes on the way, mm-hmm. and it was still a good experience. But I would like to hit Long's Peak sometime. It's a That's crazy. Hike. That's just a weird thought. It's really counterintuitive to us, like to think like. Just a few states over, it's snowing just yeah. because of the elevation. Yeah. In the fucking summertime. That's crazy. Right. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Have you been uh, Have you been around, like, the states, like, different states? To, uh, I've go, been like, more west. If you say you've been west. Mm-hmm. I think west is, like, I mean, where it's at when it comes to outdoors and stuff. For sure. It, it does like, see that no way. No question. Like, west and north, maybe. Yeah, even northwest too. Yeah, northwest, Washington. like northwest for sure, like Montana the, and them too. I've heard really cool yeah. things. That's I've a heard place Montana I would love to go. I, I've missed out on Montana. Oh I think God. I need to go. Then Wyoming, Yellowstone. Yeah, that'd be really yeah, cool. For sure. I think Grand Teton's over Yellowstone. Wait, where's that? It's in Wyoming. It's like those really pointy mountains. Uh, it's I think a little west of Jackson Hole. Uh-huh. It's like a very famous city where all the celebrities and stuff have their. Houses and property, whatever. I don't know. Sure. Yellowstone's, I believe, a little north to it. I, f- I feel Yellowstone's very crowded, overcrowded, because of, you know, tourists and stuff. Okay. But uh, Grand Teton's more uh, isolated and more natural in, in its own way, I feel like. Yeah, it's kind of shitty that a really beautiful place could get ruined by tourists, like, yeah. to some extent. It, it takes away. Yeah. And I was there two yeah. years ago, and I saw so many Chinese there. Like, I've never seen so many Chinese people in my life. There? <laughs> yeah, in Yellowstone. For, for, like, hiking? Like, just, like, it wasn't hiking. It was, like, just going watching. to the park, you know, stopping on the roadside, taking pictures. I've never seen that many Chinese people yeah. in my life. Really? Awesome. Yeah, and I think they bring a lot of tourism money here. You okay. Know, parks. and that. that it probably is, like, one of the most popular yeah, places in I this feel country. Like tourism, yeah. though, but in America in general, doesn't doesn't bring a negative aspect to it. like it doesn't ruin uh the place as like as opposed to like tourism let's say in the middle east mm-hmm. like tourism there like is taken advantage of in a way from from where like the people that uh control it or you know host it start like doing all sorts of things just for tourism and they forget the fact that like they got it take care of like the environment or the place in general for the people like that actually are locals so they just like sell it out just for tourism oh really yeah yeah, yeah. a lot of like like particular countries or um yeah you could say so you know where it's like a tourist attraction site it becomes like just for tourists you know in a way that's what they care about you know just the money that tourists bring in so oh, okay okay yeah they take advantage of all sorts of things there and they take advantage of the tourists themselves. <laughs> I've heard Egypt gets that <laughs> yeah, way as well. I was going to mention Egypt right away. Like e- like the pyramids, very uh-huh. good example. Like, I mean, the pyramids right now are just like a tourist site. Less historic, less monumental. Like you just go there and it's like people start taking care of you from the moment you step in like the premises. Like the whole so, economy is based yes, around that. Like, yeah. Oh, like especially if you can like look like a tourist, you know. White or something. <laughs> I couldn't imagine living right. in a tourist town. This yeah. camel ride is gonna be like a hundred more, <laughs> more times expensive than like. <laughs> yeah, it. it's yeah. funny, but Economy yeah, I think things. here tourism is, I think it's taken care of pretty well. I think it depends. Like I've never thought about that. I've never thought about it like around the world. 
especially like on a, on a place, uh, a lower income place. Yeah. Like not even necessarily just the Middle East, just like uh, it's just. I just think the lower income is what makes it like that. You know, really? Because they start seeing income coming in from like tourism, so they're like, "Oh, okay, let's focus on that." Uh huh. Yeah. And then sell out. It's like exactly. a sellout artist exactly. almost. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess uh, Dubai is definitely not that way, but I guess they. Well, Dubai they, is right. definitely like a tourist like attraction. It's definitely a tourist city, but Dubai holds its standards. I think. In order, right. You know. Because it, it, it's like there's more demand than supply there, I think, in Dubai. Like, people always just want to go there. So they don't really care as much whether you come or not. Someone else is going to come. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I can follow that. I can yeah. follow that. Yeah, they're always building there's new stuff there every year. Whenever I went back, there's always something new. New bridges, new places to, you know, like outdoor malls and stuff like that. And play even like little mall like like places on the beach. It yeah, yeah yeah so is it is it considered a country or a city city okay city. a city where where's it at united arab emirates it's uh right next wait to where's that other there's a map right there oh uh it's uh you see the little saudi arabia in the middle next to africa the little saudi part? arabia actually i got this right <laughs> the <here>. little saudi <laughs> arabia <laughs> okay it's pretty big actually yeah uh, but i've never taken the time to actually like look at where dubai is on a map uh huh. And this is the UAE, a little uh, sports-like place. It's very, very lively. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they call it like the United Arab Emirates because it's like made of seven emirates. I think of them as states. Like the each emirate is like a state, you know. And so Dubai is one of the states in the emirates. Okay. The very emirates. tiny. Yeah. So it's it's separate from Iran, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emirates yeah. is like one of the Gulf. It's like a little like pointy little part. Like this is a really old here. globe, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the Gulf countries that are like pretty much around the, the Gulf Shore. Okay. It's pretty cool. I don't think. So what? Why is it so new then? Because it wasn't Dubai like created in like was it created in the nineties or something or? So they like I mean there's like the national days I think fifty three years ago that's when they united the okay. Emirates they are, they used to be seven separate like entities so they used to be uh, governed on on their own and then they tribes and stuff. yeah they were just like tribal you know old Bedouin kind of like living in tents in the desert and then they united and Abu Dhabi which is the capital of the United Arab Emirates mm -hmm. was the like the more powerful, like more controlling uh, state, and it took leadership of the entire like Emirates, the seven of them. Okay. And fifty-three years ago, they united, and then not long after that, they discovered oil. Bam! England comes in. Really? Okay. <laughs> and then that's where the money came and from. And then, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And England, wow. I mean, England was there the moment that was discovered, and they took care of everything i mean took care of as in like yeah, um, took a good share of it and helped develop the country in a period of 10 years when they really really became big from the 1990s to the early 2000s yeah there's like oh, an iconic really? picture online they they show yeah. you uh, one of the most uh, famous roads in dubai sheikh zayed road and uh and that road had one in, skyscraper yeah there. like there was like one tower in the 1990s like one and then all tiny buildings and that tower let's just throw a number had like 10 stories let's say and that was the biggest tower and then everything else was tiny and then 10 15 years from there they took another image like mm -hmm. uh you know from satellite and the entire road was that was the smallest tower on the road and everything else was like you know 50 Huge. to 100 like stories so it was crazy, like, seeing the transition within, like, 10, 15 years. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, and they had the really tall skyscraper t there, too. The tallest in the world right now. Oh, really? Yeah, they built that in 2008. It took them, like, six years, eight years to build. Yeah, around about. Is it, it has some other record, right, with cities? Is it the most expensive city in the world, or is it? No, it's not the most expensive. It's one of the most expensive cities to live. Uh -huh. But Singapore, yeah. Singapore is I mean, it's most. definitely like one of the richest cities, you yeah. know, uh -huh. per capita. I mean, each, I don't know, each, every individual there probably possesses a good amount of. I think there's a lot of. Fluctuation. Yeah, in bad. A, very na I a lot of inequality. 
in a way, I feel like there's a lot of things they don't talk about, you know, and a lot of things which you see. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, whenever you're Dubai from, like, an American <clears throat> standpoint, like, you like you kind of think, like, a very wealthy – you think oil money, wealthy, yeah, yeah, and you yeah. think uh, – Which is, I mean, it's, it's, it's mostly true because the locals, the people that are, you yeah. know, from there mm-hmm. uh, originally, they – they all like, I guess are like well off, pretty well. But off. it also it's a very strong like business port of the world. So you have like a lot of people that you know invest in Dubai because you know it's it's super good for business and and they make a lot of money. You know foreigners. So you have like people coming from all sorts of countries. It's very diverse there too. You have like all sorts of people there. But you have like really rich people that come in there start their businesses or invest in something Mm -hmm. because it was growing so much it actually grew exponentially until 2008 and then there was like an economical crash oh yeah and then dubai was broke like literally straight up bankrupt Mm -hmm. and abu dhabi the capital helped it out they uh so the president is from abu dhabi the royal family Uh uh they bought that one of the things they did to help it out was buy that tallest tower in the world. The it used to be called Burj Dubai, the one that's like pointy. If you've seen it, uh-huh. and then it became called Burj Khalifa. Khalifa is like the name of the president. Oh, okay. Yeah, like he bought it like for like a billion or something just to help the the government out. Yeah. And they just like uh, you know a bunch of other things like just to get it back on track, and then it's back up again. Yeah, but they have a lot of you know world records with. In my opinion, like silly things like Very silly. biggest like mall in the world, tallest tower in the world, biggest man made ma- man made island. Have you seen Palm Island? Is that the the thing that they they literally recreated the world? That's oh, one that's of that's the There's solar the city, Dubai solar no, no, city. No, no, not the solar city. There's like the whole Earth, basically a continent in the ocean. So I think around Jumeirah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that new? I, I think they yeah. separate they separate like England years. from <laughs> France. Like they're not actually touching. I, I saw a documentary on it. This That's guy crazy. bought this tiny plot of land for like a couple million. It's literally just sand. It's like sand <laughs> that they built in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think it's residable. But like, there's this. Uh, I think there's like three palm islands that are connected to the city. People have properties there. It's very, very expensive to live there. And uh, I mean, Dubai is pretty much like an island. You know, it's like a peninsula. You know, it's it's like all surrounded by water except like one little spot. Is it man-made? Is it a man-made island? No, it's not. It's not really man-made, but uh, it certainly extended the shoreline. It's extended, yeah, Yeah. definitely. Like it was like smaller. They kept on building on it, like extending the shoreline. And then they made that island I was talking about, the one that looks like a palm tree. Yeah, three of those. That's where like uh, Atlantis Hotel is. Have you heard of Atlantis like that? Cool, like, is it the first uh, six star hotel? Yeah, seven star hotel. Seven star? I think it's seven mm, star. Not Atlantis, that's Burj Al Arab. Burj Al Arab is seven but, star. Yeah, it's the Atlantis. only seven star hotel in the world. It's the one I thought in the Atlantis water. was too. No, Atlantis is the A seven star hotel? It's the only seven yeah. star hotel in the world. Do you just like wake up to the maid giving you a blowjob or like what? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> no, like legit. So I've been to Burj Al Arab and, and it's like, it's cool. I've been there a few times, but dude. It's like a bunch of fancy crap that like is uncalled for. Like Too fancy. it's just like you sit like on a dinner table and it's all like gold plated plates, forks, knives, spoons. Like you go yeah. like in your in your rooms. It's not what I'd like to pay like two three grand a night for, but it's like like old vintage classy looking like designs. You know, it's like royal royalty looking. As okay. opposed to like if you were to go to Atlantis, which I love, it's super like cool and modern. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Modern, yeah. And it's not as expensive, but it's still like up there. Atlantis is the hotel that's on the tip of the Palm Island, the one mm-hmm. that's like man made. It's like sits on the top of it, and so you drive through that like island all the way. And then it's it has right like, there in the middle. Yeah, and it has like half of the hotel's like underwater, so you get to go down mm-hmm. in these like rooms where. Like a wall is made of an aquarium. Oh you just wow! See like water, yeah. That's sick. Really legit. Pretty cool. But hey, all these things are just like temporary. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Material things. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> I feel they're gonna crash pretty bad in the next few years. Do you buy as a whole? 
Yeah, like the whole. I feel like the whole like area, the Middle East, the Gulf area, they're so dependent on oil. You know. And yeah, Tourism's but I think only gonna help them for so much. True, true, but I think, I they think they're not that dumb. Like I, I, the Emirates has been investing in a lot of things to to make sure that they can sustain their like uh, economic like uh, you know uh, success uh, over the next like you know like decades or century or whatever after the oil uh kind of runs out in a way mm -hmm. because you know a country obviously knows you know that this is not going to last forever right uh, and especially when they have really good connections and ties with like the united states england like all these super uh strategically advanced like countries when it comes to like foreshadowing and thinking of the future uh that helps them out a lot because you know they're in the hands of people that actually can help them like plan and manage and i don't think they do all these things on their own they, they really can't because you know they started what 40 years ago and just imagine giving like a little kid like a million dollars right right <laughs> you think he's just gonna like get to just do whatever he wants with it <clears throat> but yeah no and that really makes sense yeah. too like like no, we're they're investing about it now, in huh? all sorts of science and like that's why they have like Solar City, which is like one of the coolest things I think that they could have made. It's like an entire like city based on solar power. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Like mini city. You guys said Dubai is getting a lot more like environmentally friendly as well, right? In its own ways, I'll say. But again, <laughs> it's 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 a it's it's a very arid land. And you know, I think it's gonna come down to the water crisis that's gonna really affect the area. Okay. You know, it's a human necessity, and you know it's limited supply of water. They still they get all their water like from overseas, and, like Europe and stuff. And when it comes to a point, you know, when we're really running out, uh, what are they gonna do? You know, people are not just gonna give them water. It's gonna you know prices are gonna hike, and I, I think it's gonna. I mean, they use like the whole water filtration. You mean desalination like plants? They're yeah, really expensive they, they to run. Yeah, I'm sure, but and, I mean, uh, think that's like a big issue, right? And that's now. that's like making the the uh, ocean water drinkable. Yeah, yeah that's the okay. desalination plants. Yeah, yeah. but uh, is that? Do you think they'll get cheaper over the next decade, or? I don't think so. If if I I think if there was a way, they would already would have done it because it's been going on for a while. What's the process of doing it? I'm not aware of that. Uh -huh. but I know it's a very, very costly process. Okay. A lot of energy is required for it and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, but what's your what's your reasoning for thinking the water crisis is going to like inevitably come? I just feel like you know, climate climate is changing, and you know, especially being that area, how dry it is. Mm -hmm. They don't have any way of getting water in that area, you know, and you know, obviously the oasis is very limited supply from just drinking water. They get all their water from Europe and you know from the glaciers, and the glaciers are all melting. Where is this water going? You know, like it's not gonna come to them <laughs> like no. when it comes to a point when people are in dire need of water. Like people are gonna be fighting over it, you know. I I personally believe that. I personally believe there's gonna be civil wars. On that over water, not a world war. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. I, I, I'm thinking that's extreme. That I'm, no, I'm honestly thinking that big because I believe it. At this pace, I believe it. And Are like lakes crazy. drying up all over the people world? People fighting or? over water. <laughs> like, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, people are fighting over oil. because of the global temperature rising and then yeah. evaporation. Like you know the. Well, Trump doesn't greenhouse. believe in global warming, so. I believe in climate change, <laughs> not global warming. I mean, I global warming. What's the difference? Climate change and global warming are hand in hand. But I I feel like it's a very uh, how would you say biased way of thinking. I mean, not everywhere is gonna be warm. Some places are gonna get warm. Other places are gonna get like, extremely cold. You know, like yeah, everything's yeah. gonna. I be think global warming is not like uh, like in general temperatures are rising. You know, yeah. in general, but doesn't mean the whole world's gonna you know. No, you're gonna feel you're gonna face extremities of everything, you know, in different okay. places. Like the Middle East, I feel is gonna go through a very bad drought. Kind of like we're starting to see, like in California. California, South Africa. They had the day, day zero last year when they ba basically ran out of water, in their in their whole country. Uh, was it Johannesburg? I believe it was Johannesburg, the capital. 
and uh, they they had a drive for like five, six, seven years, and uh, completely our, ran out one day. Yeah, they ran out, completely ran out. So they were rationing. They had a water rationing system going on, and what's interesting is that so like California as well. Yeah, even in California, all these fires and stuff. What's really interesting is that they got rain after like years and years, just around that time, like day zero. I think right that's the work of the wow. Lord. That's yeah, the work yeah. of Mother Nature. That's some higher power, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. That's uh, that's a cool stuff, man. Like, and they have ex- it extended for another year or something now. But yeah, look look into it. Day zero, South Africa. I think they're the first the country that's really facing it. Okay. Like a. Uh, but that's because because of droughts in one specific area but we don't have the technology to get water from i don't know say like australia is somehow able to export water but how, how could you even export that on that massive you, a scale you, you can probably do it but hey it's down to the cost which country has the money to invest that much you know that much money into just that process you know there's other things they need to run but i, I mean if it comes to it, it comes to a point where you know because it's a necessity they might throw everything they have for that you know and uh I feel like this is like 30 years in the future. Okay. Years, so like I genuinely believe that. The places that are geographically located in a location that's not close to like a sustainable form of like clean water and they're also poor, those are the countries that are going to get fucked, you think? Oh, 100%. I mean, you know, they don't have clish. Okay, so less than 2% of water on earth is drinkable. You know, think about that. Mm-hmm. And the rest of it is all salt water. You can't fucking drink that. And all these. But we made it this far. Seven billion. I mean, yeah, we made it this far, but how far can we go? You know, how far can we push? All these glaciers are located in north, you know, in Europe and North Northern Americas and stuff like that. And they're all I melting. Yeah, I, I think know. we're just gonna have to find, uh, you know, ways to utilize the salt water. I mean, th- this this process yeah. takes a lot of energy, but you know, we're all about. You know, different sources of uh, renewable energy and yeah, all maybe sorts of energy we can use that is come with an innovative way of using solar, converting solar yeah. energy and stuff. But like the topic of geoengineering, which is basically focusing on, you know, the climate stuff. Uh, I don't know if you still saw the documentary, but like the idea of using reusing the carbon in the atmosphere and recycling that to make fuel at the same cost as you know like gasoline and stuff is i think very very how you say it big you know and mm-hmm. I think that could be uh, something that's you know potentially going to change the world but the thing is people need to be more aware about it you know no more not a lot of people know about it i mean i still a work in process like progress and i think it's and according to that documentary they showed very positive results that Vice documentary. I'll send you the link of it whenever I find it. Okay, it's absolutely. Really cool. And I, I'm like, whoa, I never thought of it this way. And, you know, basically reusing what's in our atmosphere to make that. What, what would happen if, like, all the ice caps melted and then we were somehow able to reverse all the carbon in the air, like all the carbon emissions, and we somehow were able to convert them into energy or, or uh, oxygen or whatever? And we were able to like somehow reverse it, would that drop mm-hmm. the global temperature and then the ice caps would reform? Like, it, would they reform the same way? I don't know about that, but I know like we can do our best to you know do whatever's best for our planet. But at the end of the day, Mother Nature's in control. You can't do anything, you know. I mean, you can you can try. You know? I would assume that took millions of years for those ice caps exactly. to build, though. So there were the ice ages and stuff that you know, like there were periods in time and prehistorically where we've had extreme use of climate and mother nature just basically you know fixed it itself Mm -hmm. but we've come to a point where we've messed with it so much that it's very um impossible to see that happening you know on a natural scale it seems like we're at a point where it's happening so quick that we need to one slow it down and then get to a point where it's gonna like get reversed yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't have, like, a huge understanding of this, the, but... Yeah, the thing is, with the ocean level... Here you're talking into the side of it. Oh. <laughs> the thing is, with the ocean level rise, you know, you're going to see more frequency in all these hurricanes and all that stuff, and people are going to die, you know, like that, and then I feel like, you know, also the lack of clean water, drinkable water is going to be another factor, mm-hmm. and I think there's going to be chaos. 
in the next 20, 30 years. I there will be a I lot of that. global yeah. shit going down. Hella global shit, yeah. <laughs> Dark stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like the third world countries are going to suffer the most. And obviously, and I see the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer. Okay. Classic example. I mean, but that's the truth. <laughs> What's your reason for thinking the rich are going to get richer, though? I mean, you know, circumstances right now. I mean, coming from a country that's kind of developing forever, Pakistan, you know, growing up there, I've seen it, man. Like, you know, even you might have the most educated people, but, you know, corruption kind of, you know, corruption in these countries has a big effect on um, things like that, you know. And uh, I feel like, you know, the more corrupt your government is, the more the people are going to suffer. And, you know, in the case of something like water, I feel like it's going to be, you know, their rights going to be taken away from them, from their government and stuff. And, you know, they're going to be suffering because I've already seen these people suffer, you know. <laughs> and uh, I just feel like, you know, right now, if you have money, you have power, basically. And, you know, you can buy, buy your way out of anything, mm -hmm. buy anything, stuff like that. Yeah. Dark stuff. That's my I wonder point. how much money will matter at that point. I feel like it'll still like in, like if the world just went into total chaos, how much how much value do you think like money would place? Like, or do you think it'd just be like survival of the fittest at that point? Do you think people would still sell out? I think that's the last like extreme. Like he's ever seen like 2012, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, world yeah. ending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Too but many. I don't. I don't see that happening in the near future. To be honest, I don't I think don't so either. I I just. Yeah. You know, we're sus we're gonna be sustained in a, on a good. But level if for everything a while, went to shit, like, how do you think, like? Hey, okay, money would work. It wouldn't mean jack shit. It would not mean anything. I don't think so. It either. would be assets for sure, and then like mainly your like most like I don't know your primary things like your food and your water and all that stuff. The necessities. Like necessities. And how are you gonna get these necessities? Well, I mean, it's still you have all your natural sources. And that's usually the people that are, like, blessed, you know? And then you got the people that aren't. Those people who are blessed are going to all get, get richer, you know? Yeah, but... Other people who don't have anything are going to get poorer. True, but when you have, like... You know, if you live in an area where there's, like, a spring, you know, that's not... that does It's not owned by someone, you know? That's, like, government. That's, like, federal, whatever. You you have access to that. That's water. Um, farms, you know, people own the farms. I guess these people would get richer. But generally, I don't think it would be like economical. More of like it would be more like surviving based on what we have left. Okay. Mm. I don't know how power would work at that point. I don't think. I don't it know how be either. Like, it won't be like military at all. I don't think so. At least. It's like where would the structure of the military go? Yeah, because the military itself needs you know its own you know supply of whatever. Uh, production crop production is going to be affected by climate change it's already being affected by it and you know i feel like it can only get worse do you think there'll be a for food shortage as well oh yeah it's al already there is and that requires food. water too yeah exactly yeah. and there's already food shortages around the world man this is turning sad yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's getting dark it's thinking no, it's, a little bit it's, 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 it's like what's happening right now yemen that's how I told you last time about Yemen, what's going on. Uh huh. They have like 28 million people, and by it's predicted by f end of this year, 14 million people are going to die because of starvation. By the end of this year? Yeah, end of this year. <laughs> Wait, what's the, what's the reason? Because it's becoming like a war ground? Or? It's basically a war ground, yeah. Between I mean, Saudi Arabia and Saudi Iran? Iran, yeah, yeah. I think it's Saudi Arabia and Iran. I think Russia is involved too, and the U.S. Holy but, you know, shit! It's a very poor, general, poor country. Is yeah. one country ba like is the U.S. backing one of them, and they Russia's backing the other? I think so. Yeah, I, I think mean so. it's always like yeah. that. Really? Yeah. and Russia. Uh huh. Are, US and Saudi. They play the what is it called? Russia, Iran. What do they call these things? Politics. They hang with like strings, and you play with them. Oh, like they're they're playing like the puppet players puppet, or something. Yeah, they <laughs> they're the puppet players. Okay. <laughs> the U.S. plays, you know. They always got their hand in some Saudi shit. Or something and Russia no, plays with their eyes. <laughs> the world is so complex, man. Right. Yeah. So That's complex. That's why I try to live day to day in Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> Springfield's hey, I'll cool. be out of here. A part of me likes to like be informed about the shit, but another part of me is like almost ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Nearly. 
hey, I, I see both sides, but I think I think I always kind of tend to seek out the information because I just find it interesting. No, I think everyone should seek out the information. Everyone should be knowledgeable. Everyone should know. Like, ignorance in the end of the day is not good. Uh, but I think the to go to sleep at night, lots of the times you need to try and put these things behind you. Well said. You know? Well said. For your own mental sanity. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, 99% of people who are living in first world countries will never have to experience uh, that feeling, you know, of, of being unable to do anything about it, you know. And when you live in these first world countries, it's like really a choice. You always have the opportunity and it's up to you to to get out of a hole if you are in one. Mm-hmm. But you don't have the choice necessarily in yeah, these other places. Exactly. No, there's no know. choice. I That's mean, scary. Just That's nothing. scary. You can try all you want, but you're only getting so far. There's, there's fourteen. Just pe- like you, you can't. Fourteen million people expected to die. Oh yeah, that's and I didn't even know about. That. That's that's insane. That's and you get the link for that too. Let's <laughs> you send me a lot of links after this. <laughs> you can put it in your video at the end. You no, know, I'm down. I'm down. Sources, you know, fact check, whatever. And uh, yeah, so crazy. I'm down. But it, oh my god, yeah. I, it, it's interesting. It, I also I think it's important with like politics and like economics and world issues and stuff. I feel like it's good to inform yourself, but not to like take those opinions like too seriously and like get like heated up about them. Yeah, no. Because a lot of it, like you said, it's out of your control. Stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you can only talk about it and inform people, and that's I think very important. People are aware of it, so yeah. That's why I I want to gain the depth, like the depth of traveling a little bit and like experiencing the rest of the world so i have some more idea because i mean everything in my mind about just the middle east for example everything in my mind is like media like, through media and imagination imagine, like well, imagine, and maybe like yeah. seeing pictures online yeah. and i try i try my best to not be conditioned by the media but ultimately man like it is gonna it is it, you know whether i mean there's all sorts of different types of media you know there's there's outlets that you know, bend the truth, and there's things where it just comes flat out. I think media that's uh, expressed by the people, not by a news outlet, is the most true media, usually. Which we're seeing a huge increase in that yes, in the world now. Yes. And I mean, Likewise. you know, thanks, yeah, to, thanks yeah. to those social media platforms, but in the same time, a lot of it is fake, because it's not like, you know, anyone can post anything. Anyone can edit anything. Absolutely. Yeah. But at this point, like, you can't really think of, like, your main media outlets as reliable because they're all somewhat controlled by parties, you know, of people. And each party wants uh, the majority of people to have a different view of, of of this idea or this country or this problem in the world. So it's weird you know. to think that your ideas and thoughts and opinions in the world are being like manipulated. Yeah. Just I mean they're they're manipulated in a very professional way. You you'll you won't even notice it. Mm. It's mm-hmm. just like, hey, let's let's stream this story, but let's not stream this story. And so at the end of the week you only know the like one side of the story. You don't know like the whole thing. And that's what's uh that's what's wrong. That's like the most effective persuasion, you know. Like yeah. whenever you can, like very subtly, yeah, you like just, just creep you just in don't, and you just don't present it. You, know, uh-huh. you don't even need to say like, "Oh, this happened, this happened," but this seems more true. You just don't even you shut that down. I hate that way of thinking too. Yeah. My way or the highway, kind of. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I mean, with Fox and CNN, just like even here in the states, you know, even like presidential elections and things like that that's on it's like that every single four years yeah so think about like fox and cnn uh you know talking about global things like abroad you know so yeah I've, i've heard a quote along those lines it's like hear both sides and the truth is somewhere in the middle yeah 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 it's i don't even know it's i've heard it for sure something like that but it, it, if you just take in one side's information, one side's information, that's going to ultimately like sway yeah, your opinion, yeah, exactly. and that's going to be what you think. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you need to take in like different sides and 
also not just the same news source, the same media source. Do your research. Yeah. That's it. But on that topic, man, like I, I find like podcasting like this, I think I know in my own personal life, like I've experienced so many benefits just from listening to like different podcasts. I, I think this is a really cool media. Uh just to be able to to get these different thinkers and they, they will talk about different events going on in the world and you get like different perspectives if you yeah. seek them out. I think this is a really interesting new form of medium. Usually, I mean, even on the big media platforms, whenever they put like the, you know, the parts where they have like interviews or uh, talks with uh, people like that live in wherever, like wherever, like a uh, huge you know, problem is going on you see all the truths coming out like you know when like a reporter is like streaming live with someone that's like live in the in the country where all the you know crap's going down you can see that there's not much hidden truth anymore because it's like right behind him and he's just like saying what's going on rather than like when they just have their uh, whole crew in a room and they just like spill out all the all the news they want to yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you can't be standing in, like, problem country where bombs are going off and stuff and then be like, yeah, everything here is pretty chill. It's uh, it's not <laughs> too bad, you know? <laughs> yeah. But even, like, when they try to, you know, there's always, like, oh, who attacked who or who antagonized or who, like, started, uh, provoked, like, the other person and stuff. That is, like, just, like, being biased onto on whose side like instigated something mm -hmm. is usually the point of like um like tension because every media outlet's gonna be siding with one like it's gonna be siding with a side you know in a way like they're gonna say like the government has uh you know attacked these like these people or whatever or you'll have like oh the rebels like attack the government and so in one form or the other, they're going to side with, you know, however they present their story. Mm -hmm. And so you can hear like this media outlet presenting it in the, in from some, from one party's side and then another one from the other party's side, even though they're the same exact story, like they're the same exact uh, incident. It's crazy how much you can just twist the, yeah. Twisted. And that's what like makes people like side with blah, this president or blah, these people. Yeah, and then media, media, and I guess if we're talking about the Middle East is controlled quite a bit, like by the government in a very oh like, really a very ridiculous that's fucking way. scary. Oh, that's like, scary. It's, it's straight up controlled by the government. It's not even like a hidden like you know truth. And everybody's just <laughs> it's accepted more like it. yeah, no, yeah, everyone accepts it. Like you don't hear any. I mean, in the Emirates, it's even way worse than like in in like Syria or. Iraq or wherever because there they still have somewhat freedom but in the Gulf countries like in this, the Emirates Saudi Arabia Qatar all these they like really control the media to where you don't hear anything about the government itself or whoever's running it that's scary you don't hear anything mm -hmm. that's why they look like oh nothing's wrong you know and they have the ability you to shut hear, down like, external yeah, forces trying exactly. to persuade you in their uh -huh. direction as it's well it's like like the United Nations or whatever has to dig in to like find out what's really going on uh -huh. rather than like, Oh, then the media outlets, the local ones have exploited what really happened. That's crazy. Yeah. And go, I'm going back to what we were saying, like with podcasting, with vice different, like, yeah, just like imagine, all these independent media sources. That, so that's picture, what's so cool about the rise of the internet. Picture this, like what we're doing right now, uh -huh. picture this, like if someone tried to pull this off, uh, back, back home like in any of these countries yeah they're they're not gonna be they're not gonna be okay they're gonna <laughs> get in big trouble for sure yeah. like, for just oh yeah sitting down and having a Literally, conversation if we were if, speech is not there. yeah there's no like yeah. i mean yeah you have the freedom of speech but make sure it doesn't go anywhere like you can talk with your friends but if you post this like it's online speech you're gonna get your ass yeah yep and i mean this is this is how it is and like yeah, a lot of the countries. The more east you go, I mean, not just the Middle East. I think like even China, China, like things like North that. Korea. Like they'll control that 
So that is frightening. Yeah, because this is this is where truth comes out. Like even though you know me and Mo might not know like like exact facts about things, but we're gonna we're gonna yeah. speak our minds. We're gonna speak what we really think is happening. We're not gonna be like protecting someone just because like he's supposed to be protected or in you know a party or a you know, government or a, a group of people. We're just gonna say what we think is the truth because here you have the freedom to do that and you're safe. Right. No one's going to come and like attack you or do anything about it. Or at least you think that's so. a wild <laughs> thought, but you can't do that there. That so, actually like scares you more than like even like committing a crime, like a normal crime, because there you can end up in all sorts of crap that it's not it's not regulated it's not through it. the law. Like, oh, if you say this, this is what happens. It's like if someone talks shit on like the royal family or something, they could just disappear or something straight up like you might not see him again just for their words yeah if they like if they said something bad enough where it like exploited something that's like super important like let's say someone started like put uh you know posted this podcast and it was all about like what like the the president's brother like how he took advantage let's say he was the minister of state and he took advantage of like a lot of uh money outlets and he was just you know banking in all this cash uh, illegally like you know let's say through the borders you always have like border uh, tax and stuff like that uh, a lot of the times in these countries they the people that run the borders keep all that money and they tax like higher and they just control it illegally and and they get caught like l- like years and years later and sometimes they don't get caught but it's always it's never like out in the news you know, even if someone does get in trouble, he gets caught, he gets in trouble, but they don't say it. And right. it, can, it can keep on dragging on forever. And then somebody just somebody yeah. else walks in, fills a spot, they get in trouble, they get taken exactly, out. Exactly, yeah, and sometimes they don't get in trouble. Sometimes it's like a network, it's like a oligarchy or whatever, you know, if they just, like, run that crap that way. That's why you find, like, people from the Middle East sometimes, like, like extremely rich, like, ridiculous rich, I'm talking, like, hundreds of billions but all that money is super illegal that like it's never like they're never you know announced on the list of richest people in the world because it's Uh all hidden you know (laughs) and then they get caught with like a freaking warehouse full of cash straight up like cash which is ridiculous you know there's no no such thing as like cash like this nowadays but like have you heard of libya like the the Gaddafi? Like the the president oh, yeah, that yeah. got like you know, that's he, northern Africa, right? Northern Africa, yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's uh, did I say Libya? Yeah, Libya. Oh, Libya yeah, yeah, he's Libya. Yeah, yeah Libyan. Yeah. Whether or not he was a good president or not, pretty much his image in the world came out to be like he was a dictator, uh-huh. which is like let's go with that. Regardless of that, he was like, like filthy rich in a way that's ridiculous because he would like bank in money from like from different ways that aren't like like legal you know uh-huh. and and no one can say anything about it there's no media you know you can't talk about it you talk right. about that you're gone <laughs> as a, as a leader too yeah as a leader oh it's the leaders that's the the corruption is in the leaders because they have the power to they do have so the power to do so and you're just like wow. you know you're just locked in the system you can leave that's the thing. I can't stop you from leaving. Uh-huh. You can't just, you just can't speak. Like a lot of the times there was this guy, there was like this informant or something. I don't remember. Was Saudi, Saudi Arabia? Arabia? No, it was in Turkey. Yeah, but the he Saudi, the Saudi, Saudi Arabia Saudi embassy that, or yeah. something. No, it was the other way around. No, no, he was in Turkey. And no, he was he a Saudi the guy. That he was a Saudi him. guy in Turkey. He went to the Saudi embassy. Yeah, and that's he disappeared. Exactly. But he, he was a Saudi Arabian dude that like exploited so many things about the government about the government like corrupt things and they killed him they straight up killed him and they was like i mean they did it in a it's, it's like they killed him it's in their embassy up. and they like burned his body but then the united nations like caught him like they figured it out and they and now they're like i don't know it's nine nine different like ministers or like big like position like high position people just got locked away even though like you know that just came from like up there and probably the president, uh-huh. you know, or the king or whatever, not the president. Like, but they're not gonna touch him. <laughs> but you know, it's it's ridiculous stuff like that. 
media there is just ridiculous. That's crazy. Yeah, I remember back back when I was when I hit puberty, we had to mm-hmm. get a proxy to to get on the bad websites. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you mean? There's uh, a lot of these uh, adult websites are blocked. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> stuff like that, you know, it's blocked. You don't really have the freedom to, you know, do whatever on the internet. They're watching you, basically. And yeah. So people find ways around it, basically. Oh, yeah, <laughs> VPNs, you name it. There's so many things you can use. That's so funny. I'm just remembering, like, we'd have to do a whole bunch of crap just to watch a little video. That's <laughs> ridiculous. That's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> that is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff and vice. <laughs> I'm never gonna take porn for granted again. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, funny. Yeah, Vice has this really cool documentary. It's called Slaves of Dubai. I recommend it. Highly recommend it. Really? It's about their blue collar community getting exploited by governmental yeah. agencies in construction work. They basically are like live like slaves and yeah. Yeah, see, that's it's where the it's an amazing ridiculous difference in like statuses, inequality like, yeah. goes down Extreme. because, like you, like you said, the blue collared people or workers and the white collared workers, or you can say like more of the foreign, like the expats that come in to do the the hard work, the labor for the country, as compared to like the locals and the citizens, it's just like the ground and the sky, like the difference is insane. Like one's paid like let's say minimum wage here, it's way less. Way less than minimum. And then the other is paid like not like something normal, something like we're talking like abnormal. millions abnormal. So the difference isn't isn't like oh low middle high. There's like low high. Wait, you're saying for just a construction worker? Yeah. Or, or you say like a construction Blue worker in general Blue versus Blue. whoever else? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh but, wow. But okay, I'm following. Yeah, yeah. There is not like a construction worker here. The way they assess and value labor there is much lower than here. Here, a construction worker is actually, like, it's a decent job. You, uh-huh. you can actually make probably better money doing construction than your way average, way. like, starting job with a bachelor's here. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they work their ass off. They make good money. There, you work your ass off, probably end up with a heat stroke before you make, like, a grand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people died building that huge tower. Really? Yeah, because yeah, like the weather, bro. Like it's it's a hundred degrees year round or whatever it is. And summers are r- twenty summers. retarded, like hot. Like the biggest problem about the Middle East is so there's a lot of uh, institutional racism there. The base, the racism on ethnicity. What do, what, do um, what do you mean by inst? What do you mean by that? Institutional racism is based on your ethnicity. So hey, you know, let's say there's a lot of diversity in Dubai. Let's say around 196 nationalities reside there. So whenever you apply for a job and stuff, you have to put on your uh, resume mm-hmm. or CV. <laughs> resume or CV, you have to write your nationality and add a picture. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and the base, your pay according to that. And uh, I've done a few papers on this. Uh, they base your pay based on your ethnicity? Yes. They don't openly say that, but that is the truth. And uh, they remember I hit that? Thank you. It's like we're chilling. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, institutional racism is pretty big in the Middle East. As in, like but you, you, uh, let's say you know they're hiring. Uh, this is an easy example. They're hiring two people for the same job. One's from England, one's from India. All right, same job, same position, same qualifications, same qualifications. They're both like as qualified, like same degree same crap whatever it is the england the english uh employee is gonna be paid three times what the indian guy is gonna be paid Mm -hmm. straight up it's not even hidden you know i mean they don't they don't go like yo you're gonna be paid like this much less than that guy my uncle was telling me about this this happens in the u.s as well really yeah my uncle like he said but he said the company really he was working for. Here it's much there's like non-discrimination laws here, which are, you know, I, I'm sure there's laws here. Here, if it's too, the same exact position, same thing, no, they're gonna be paid the same. The the difference comes in because they're gonna have to sponsor usually the people that are foreign, the one, the people that aren't from here, the skilled workers. They have to sponsor them, so they already spend quite a bit of money 
on that person to, to be able to work there. So he might be paid a little less, but he's not going to be paid like something, you know, it's pretty, it's going to be marginal. It's barely, it's not, it's nothing substantial. Like, cause you can, you can like, there's all sorts of suing is like, Sue happy, Sue happy. People are so happy here. Yeah, <laughs> the I'm second so you happy. find something yeah. that I learned that yesterday. But he, he said they will have like people come over from India, like specifically India. And they're really skilled and he sees their paycheck and they're making a lot less. And he said the men don't as much, but the women will like talk down to these people because they are so replaceable. Hmm. Which is a weird concept. And it's like the, he Are you talking he, about here in the US? Mhm. I forget where he works. He works for some tech company. I think they, did they hire him? Do they work? Yeah, do they? That's what I was saying. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're pretty much freelancers. It, like th- that's oh, okay. something different. I mean, they're outsourcing for a reason because the cost is low, you So know? it's more ethical. In, in its own way, I mean, you okay. know, they're getting paid pretty decent for where they're living but if you're in a country like dubai you, when you're trying to make you know trying to live a decent life not make ends meet uh, you know ends you know ends meet what do you call it ends needs and uh you know and people want to get a decent job and they don't get it and someone else gets the same job for a better pay because and everybody wants to be in dubai place. so yeah, it's probably I mean, really replaceable the, the, uh, exactly you can live in springfield off uh like a thousand a month or whatever it is uh-huh. and you're fine like you can eat drink like you're not gonna have that much fun but whatever it is uh-huh. but if you're gonna live in dubai you can't do that right you just can't even the cost of living like to have a place or even to, la to or chicago well, yeah or that's why because think of it that way there's yeah. no th- i mean i lived in a town that's an hour away from dubai for for a few years not a few years quite a bit of years and and it's it's similar to like it's a little cheaper, but it's still not cheap, cheap, like, to where it's, like, the difference between Springfield and L.A. Uh-huh. It's going to be a little cheaper, but you still need to manage to make, like, blah, blah to live, like, pretty decently. Okay. And that's why, like, everyone that works, you know, usually blue-collar jobs there. They're not, not even Does not meet that, like, minimum. Because here, like, the minimum wage, as low as it might sound... If you work decent. 40, 50, whatever, 60 hours a week, you, you're you going to live, you know, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. You might not be able to support a family off the minimum wage, but it is a minimum wage for a reason because if you work this much, you can probably have a place and eat. Right. Which is the two things you need, you know, to like live. But they're like, you barely can do that. Barely. You Like, I, I, you know, I've seen where construction workers, like, they they rent out like this let's say this one one room like house or whatever it is and 10 of them live in it straight oh up. wow yeah, like like they make it into a shelter like elite i mean you're not even allowed but they do that because they can barely then they they travel overseas to get that job so they can send back and support their family back home uh-huh. so can you picture like them like having to just barely survive and send whatever to support their family it's just that's where the ridiculous bias happens and uh yeah bias racism bias. in a way because you know you don't get people that are like western going to work a job like that there right. who's gonna leave their nice place in the west to go to a desert like so is it racism or is it like looked down upon based on status it's called i mean it, it it's you know it's institutional racism goes hand in hand you know like with what your status status the institutional racism is based on where you're from and they base the racism on where you're from you know stuff like that and then that goes okay with the okay status. Yeah. because the i status mean status goes in with that you're not gonna get like a like a poor european dude coming to do construction in the emirates it just doesn't you he'd rather do construction it. where he's from yeah. uh-huh. why is he gonna come and do that yeah. And there's an interesting thing about Vice to talk about how they kind of trick them into, you know, getting these contracts um, in that Slips of Dubai documentary, you know, to take away their passports and stuff so they can't leave the country. Oh, so they're literally yeah. dependent. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's very, it's a very powerful they, documentary. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's a very, very, sh- they released it in 2006 or seven. They take away their passports till they're done with their contract? Yeah. So that's why they're. I, I didn't even know that. It's like slavery. Well, it's literally. It I mean, like it's, yeah. it's it's forcing them. It's uh, one of the most powerful documentaries I probably. No, ever I seen. love exploiting them. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can in this country, yeah. ha! America, baby. <laughs> yeah, I wrote like a two or three papers in the same undergrad. 
it's for just, my English classes. It is so oh, ridiculous gosh, that you know how what? much of this life, like how much of the opportunities you get is based on where you are born. Yeah. That is so ridiculous. Fucked. But this is dude, this is like life, man. That's why mm. some people like work their asses off. And I'm not even gonna go into like my family, but just to like give their kids or themselves an opportunity at life uh, or a chance. Uh-huh. They they move away. So uh I've I've been blessed. I feel super blessed. Like I've been, you know, happy pretty much all my life. Uh but I was born in Syria. Syria is like, you know, Syria is not a, like, it's not a first world country, but it's also not a third world, you know, it's somewhere there in the middle. But uh, my family in Syria are decently, you know, they, they live well. But to get that opportunity to thrive and really, like, like work your way up, obviously Syria wasn't going to be the place. So my dad worked his butt off to, uh, like, move out. And so he moved to Abu Dhabi, like, you know, Dubai in the Emirates. He got a good job there. I was only like three. So we moved there and I grew up there my whole life. So that was the first step of like the ladder. So it was from Syria to like Dubai, just like their two hour flight away. But Uh that was a huge difference in opportunity, you know, because Dubai is thriving. There's like money there. There's chance to get a good job there. But my dad's a skilled worker. He's a chemist. He's not a blue collar. Like, so he can actually like he worked for the government and stuff like that. And then after that, uh, the States, you know, we moved here. And that's also for the opportunity to to keep on, you know, thriving. And it's all for us, you know, for me and my my siblings. He he was doing fine. He didn't really want to move but <laughs> but he did it for you know, yeah did it for us so that's like mm-hmm. you do all these you, you work your butt off so you can give your your kids uh a chance at like you know getting the best of their opportunities based on a location right you know i love the emirates i wish i could have stayed there <laughs> but thinking about it in the long run i needed to come here for my education uh mm-hmm. And now that I'm here, you know, I've been here for five, six years. You know, I love it. I like it. Like it, love it. I don't know. Springfield's good. <laughs> but I can see myself even, you know, continuing to live here for, you know, a little longer and uh, and doing better and better. And then, you know, probably end up going and checking out Dubai again, saying what's up. <laughs> but, you know, that's how it is, like. It's just sometimes you're limited just because of the geographical location you're at because that country is, like, not as advanced or developed, and so you don't have the resources, the people, the opportunities. You just can't do anything about it. It's Unless a sad you're born feeling. into richness or, like, into money. Or to feel yeah. that limitation. To feel yeah. that limitation. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, my mom's a doctor, you know, and my dad's a chemist, but in Syria – as hard as they work they probably wouldn't have they they wouldn't have done anything like they would have been okay like, you know they would have lived well but you wouldn't have thrived you wouldn't mm. have had money to travel and stuff like that it would still be very limited even though these are professions if you were to have them here in the states you would have been like really well off right yeah, yeah. and so it's that ladder you know you move to the emirates and then you start doing a little better and then hopefully, like, the next step's even better than that. Yeah. It's wild. It's so you can never, insane. you can never go back down, Jordan. What's, what's better than the States? Where can we go? I think this is it. Maybe Mars? <laughs> 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 no, I think it's a, it's a great country. I love it. But. I mean, I, lo- I love traveling, you know, seeing. Cool That's a big places. part of why I want to travel so much, too, is to gain, like, gratitude on where I grew up at. Because mm, this yeah. is all I've ever known. Yeah. I've spent most, 99% of my life I've spent here in this one yeah. state. I think it's, it's very a good important. Thing, trust me. But you have to travel to see the world, to see what it's like. I mean, there's. Yeah, probably there's, there's, there's Yeah, there's definitely, like, places where it's cooler you know than the states like you go visit some parts of europe or south um, south america or the, even the middle east or wherever you know there's definitely cooler things to see but i think overall like it's a life like to succeed and stuff your best shot is at it is 
to here. Yeah, there's there's you know a lot of countries where you can succeed pretty well. This is one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are most people content with wh- where they're at in these countries. It's just that who really wants to go the next step, you know, you know, seek more. You know, um, in these these countries, like referring to like Syria and y- yeah, India, developing nations, developing nations. Yeah, totally, because opportunity is limited. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, not easy but you know people are still smiling and happy with what they have but then there are other people who want something something better you know yeah but then you also have you have people who are like filthy rich like in the emirates that would never want to move to the states Mm -hmm. actually like a majority of my friends are like were like that which i mean i thought i would pretty much be on the same page and i would have if i stayed i was fine and content and i knew like nothing wasn't gonna be bad but unless you're like like thriving like really really well like then you want to like look at what you can do more yeah. i always wanted to move even when i was in dubai i wanted to move yeah and i wanted to move to the u.s I ever didn't. since a kid i told my parents <laughs> like dude i want to go i want to go and <laughs> even though it was very hard for them they still made it happen you know and uh, so what do you, what about the u.s is so appealing to the foreigners you think uh it's just uh the the freedom like i said the freedom brings in opportunity and these opportunities are there you just gotta get here and you know find your way here and seize them okay it's obviously easier said than done but not impossible you know opportunity here is i mean you know can take it this way like uh it's easier to get here than in other places you know which here is you beautiful just work hard yeah which uh-huh. is amazing you know yeah here it's and about your you're really putting in the work it's yeah. not like it's the hustle finding the thing it's out there it's, it's just waiting for you to like commit and work hard work for it and people like are are ready and can work hard everywhere like it seems like you two have a world. better understanding of this like this this like obviously i knew like i grew up with with opportunity but i didn't realize like I, maybe to an extent i feel like i took this for granted or yeah you won't, exactly. no, you won't really n- realize it I'm as much because it. here like this is the norm you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this is what you're born into but in when you're born into where you can't even find the opportunity you can't find like where you can put all that energy and work to to thrive you you might work your butt off and not go anywhere Mm -hmm. because you're just limited that's what like the whole thing is about you literally work harder than somebody here in the u.s and still be making yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah way shittier of a life for yourself that's that's a scary thought saying that people um, people work their butts off here i'm I was actually surprised, like, the amount, like, there's less laziness, I'd say, <laughs> overall in the U.S., you know, people really? here all work. Yeah, I mean, your kids here work. You start working when you're freaking 16, because mm-hmm. everyone wants to make a little buck, you know, but but there you can work and work and work so hard and still be, like, in that range where you're still not. Still struggling. Like, yeah, still struggling. Very yeah. true. I think that's what I want to gain the most with with traveling because I know I've told you guys like I want to backpack Europe after college. You should. Yeah, you like should. that's that's like a main thing where I want to gain is is to sit down and connect with people that have been, you know, been been on the grind and that that don't take these first world Western countries for granted. And I want to gain perspective and closure and just just uh, gratitude overall, like where I was raised. Yeah, Be I will say this though. Europe is amazing, but it's not going to demonstrate that as much because it's Eastern also part will. Yeah, Eastern will. I mean, Europe as a whole is like a very diverse continent and it changes quite a bit from going from like France, England to like Ukraine, whatever, Czech, all these like yeah. you know. It changes like so the good. economy, the people, the lifestyle, the standard of living. But uh to see like the worst case scenarios, probably not in Europe. Right. But it can give you a mm-hmm. good like idea. Probably the you'll, more like Southeast Europe you go. Yeah, you'll see like, a what's really going. going into the uh, former communist countries. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll see you'll see the 
transition in life, how people live. I, I personally haven't been there, but I know from the historic facts, like, you know, mm -hmm. life in the Western part is much better than the Eastern part of the continent. And yeah. And you'll see that if you do the whole Europe thing. And I, I think, I think Europe would be a really good stepping stone to be able to gain the independence and just, um, uh, confidence that i can like get around from place to place yeah. to place oh, yeah. i recommend south america it's a very the, good yeah, yeah. Right? yeah i think it's a very good uh, spot to start your travels because it's not a, uh, like crazy transition it is you know it's a transition but it's still relatively like relatively like, i was thinking relatable. about starting like in england yeah. like ireland yeah, yeah. like places like this that, that speak english and then moving to places like maybe germany that also speak english but like they a little are, yeah. less of it exactly. and then yeah, work no, around to like france that's smart because traveling is not easy especially traveling alone mm -hmm. um it's actually like a challenge nearly I love traveling alone. uh but <laughs> putting yourself there is what's nice if you're traveling like part of a tur tourist group or whatever, that's not no, that's not that. like one of those packages where they take you around and show you the cool things and you go and sleep together in a hotel and eat together. That's that's fun, but that's, that's sightseeing. Not, yes, it's convenience. not true. Like it's much. So it's more convenient. Yeah, it's yeah. not it's not yeah. true tr true traveling. I mean, it's traveling, but like to get the experience of like what it's like to be out there alone and find your your way you know and live for blah blah time yeah that's where it's at that's Look at where the countries you're gonna go to and see the cool spots you want to visit you also have to you be you know see, and just you know find your way you know make your own way you also want to get like uh screwed up a little bit like you you don't want to it doesn't have to be the smoothest travel you want to like find yourself in a hole and go like shit what do i do now like, i feel that 100 <laughs> you know? man i like, feel that as part of it like one of these <laughs> nights like something crap you know shitty goes wrong like, you lose your passport i mean that's a, that's a bad Ooh. one but hey like you're american that's a good thing yeah. um if you weren't <laughs> might be a little rough <laughs> but yeah you know, something like that and then you're like well shit what do i do now or like you lose your car you have money something like that you know, those are parts of end of the day Builds you're going to live, but that's it's part of the travel, you know. But I'd say Europe is great for that to start because, like, Europe will take care of you in a way. Like, once you go to, like, a, like a government building or state, they'll, they'll, you know, the they won't leave there. you, like, hanging, like, randomly and, like, keep you in trouble. But if you go to, like, a less developed place, like, it's going to be rough. Kind of fucked. Yeah. Wow. Not gonna be you as gotta easy. be really ready for it. Really ready for that. Research and okay. History. Yeah. Not C that you're like walking customs. into a war zone, but you're also like they're not gonna, they're not gonna be as easy. Like there's, they won't be easy access to things that might help you out. Okay. Yeah. And they won't treat you as, you know, special or anything. Yeah. If anything, they might take advantage of you. <laughs> that's that's what I like. <laughs> yeah. America. Oh, you're gonna get taken. Back. Gringo, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. American accent. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. I was thinking about saying I'm from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's gonna help the cause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. If you go to like, freaking like, let's say Egypt, <laughs> and you want to get like a a car ride, like a taxi ride, he might just charge you like double as soon as you're white. You won't know. You won't like. You won't argue. You're, you're just gonna pay. You know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he can do it. He knows what's going on. That's why you always travel. Like, try and be with a local. Find someone that actually yeah. like is genuinely like nice and cares. Try and have like him help you a little bit. Because mm -hmm. it's it's good and all to be to travel alone, but it's also not the smartest to just try and go through everything alone. Because sometimes there's these barriers. You're just gonna can't do anything about it. Like mm -hmm. even if you wanna go to and visit the country they're not gonna you know just let you you know let you be for the sake of it mm -hmm. and i, I want to gain that that like i said that perspective that independence and that capability of being able to and in learn the art of traveling in itself mm -hmm. like you said like like oh i've been in this situation before and i met that one random person who helped me find my way here like how can I get creative in this moment and make that happen again yeah, or something similar? How do you find similar? these people? How do you 
communicate in a smart way mm-hmm. how do you be how do you make yourself less exposed to get not, not like not be seen as like a tourist you know yeah yes. vulnerable to be like because you're like a goldilocks in the middle of like a jungle maybe <laughs> and they're gonna see you interesting <laughs> it's metaphor. funny how we put it together but no dude like traveling traveling in general is just it's just dope Plus, you'll know where to, you know, you're not going to go to some random sketchy part of the country. You're going to go to, mm-hmm. like, where people are and where tourists are, too. You're yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably start out more touristy, and yeah, then when I gain, and I, I would like to, like, who knows, maybe I find, like, some odd job over in Europe, and then I decide that I want to go to Vietnam and go from Vietnam to Thailand to wherever. Yes. You know, like, like, if I feel confident doing something like that, then maybe I'm over there, and I just decide to. Make it. give a go on it. I would do that. If I could, I would. <laughs> That'd be dope. The most busy partying in America. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> busy you guys are traveling right now, kind of. Yeah, I've <laughs> seen it all. I've seen it. Honestly, like on, on the topic of soccer, I think that'll be a huge advantage too, because I want to bring just one pair of shoes and then one pair of uh, cleats. Yeah, have cleats. Like cleats. some indoor shoes. I'd get indoors. Yeah, don't get. Just play anywhere. Because yeah. then I can meet people on the streets and like, hey, you guys want to go out? Cool, let's go. Let's go to hit the pub tonight. Dude, if you, you go, know? yeah, if you go to like England, England or France or Sunday, yeah. like Sunday, uh, Sunday league, oh. Sunday league, and all that, yeah. <laughs> they probably won't let him on with the accent. Uh, <laughs> well, those, those are leagues you can join. Uh, and obviously, the street games can always help. Them. But uh-huh. if you go to, uh, if you decide to eventually like randomly just want to go to Dubai, just let me know. I okay. Got you. Yeah, absolutely. A there, there's a good chance of that too. Yeah, I, I'm people there too. Literally. Really. Just a few calls. Have you picked up with the Rolls Royce? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to Dubai, boys. <laughs> uh, yeah, I used to host soccer tournaments there in Dubai. Made oh, some really? Money. It was illegal as hell, but I made some good money. Really? Before. Yeah, I hosted like three or four tournaments. And I barely stole my dad's car to go drive. No, that was as far as illegal to, goes with me. We used to <laughs> soccer pitches, and we used to. I used to invite all my friends from different schools. I, I you tell them the rent is like a hundred. You'd collect like five hundred. I used to buy trophies. <laughs> I had a partner too. We used to buy <laughs> trophies and stuff, have a prize money, and then we're making everything's profit on top of that. And the people oh who owned the God. pitch, we knew them. They're like one of my high school bu- buddies. So like, yeah, we got you. We got you in the low, low, fifty percent off. And we used to just. Posted the whole day, make our money, go back, party, have a good time. No way. I used to like three or four of those before coming. Yeah, I was. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. I, good, I didn't have that kind of. That's a cool little gig. I like yeah, that. I like uh, that idea. Fun. We, I feel like you lived, you definitely got the street experience much more than me. Oh, dude, I, <laughs> I was around like some kids know, that were like super spoiled and shit. Oh, know, really? And also, yeah. and I went to like different <laughs> schools. I went to a local school. I went to British school. And I went to like a fucking Pakistani school. I went to an American That's school. That's true, yeah. I went to, I went to two school. schools. Really? And both yeah. those schools were, yeah, one of them president's nephew was like my best friend sitting right next to me and the other one they were all just like rich kids the president wait president of what the country his nephew yeah oh shit yeah he was like he was my best friend from grade one to grade seven city yeah straight up i didn't even know it for like three four (laughs) years we were tiny i mean we'd sit there he was like cool as shit he we played soccer he was such a baller he was good at math i was great at math we were like the best at math there you go there you go (laughs) except he'd have like four people following him around in the little like school all the time i had like in suits and i just never knew what they were for (laughs) bodyguards and crap he he would he would have bodyguards yeah yeah, yeah. he had a brother and a sister two brothers and a sister and each one had two Two people by every classroom that stood outside the classroom, yeah. He was that important. I mean, he's the president's nephew. <laughs> His dad is the re- president's brother. Yeah, he was really important. Wow. But wow. I mean, but the whole, like, class was, like, like the whole class who had kids that were up there. You know, they weren't, like, maybe not royal family, but they were, like, you know, blah, minister or blah, like. Ambassador. So that was an uncommon at your school. Yeah, it was just the school was like a, it was a British school. It was uh-huh. like a private British school, and it was like the best one in town. And so all the, all the like important 
people sent their kids there. Um, my parents were decent. <laughs> they were. They just sent us there because they wanted a good, good, good education. Uh-huh. So I spoke English since I was like five, instead of like when I oh, moved okay. here. You know, so I came. I moved to the states speaking English already, because of that school. Wow. Okay. Yeah, they were all like British kids there, like British kids living in Dubai. Yeah, yeah. They all went to that school because it was like they only hired British staff, like teachers, and you know. So there's a lot of British influence in Dubai as well. So many Brits. Yeah, 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 so many Brits. Yeah. Really? Yeah, England, England, uh, I mean, uh, the Emirates was, uh, what do they call it? A colony, in a way, of England, you know. Okay. Because England, like, has a shit ton of colonies, you know. India's, like, used to be a colony of, in- of England. Took over the world, basically. Yeah, England, like, before, like, America used to be, like, I mean, colonial even while, time. yeah, colonial times, I mean, like, America England, like, it was pretty much <laughs> it's <Yeah>. from that. <laughs> but like England yeah. and France pretty much France was the other country that they were just they colonized all these countries so they even though they like gave them independence but once they discovered oil yeah. they s- took you know they, they didn't colonize them again but they they were the managers the in a way of Their what's going on is always there in Asia especially interesting okay yeah, yeah Indonesia has a lot of Dutch is interesting there's a lot of belgium islands as well funny thing is that kid's uh dad if you want to look him up he he owns uh like the president's brother sheikh mansoor bin zayed al nahyan he owns uh manchester city you know the club you like soccer yeah, yeah, do you know how uh, the dude the owner of manchester city is from the emirates yeah, you heard yeah. Of that? yeah that's the dad I d- but he didn't own it when we were like young. Cause uh-huh. I didn't really follow so- European soccer. But then when I grew up, I'm like, I read like, you know, Emirati president or what or uh, uh, sheikh. whatever sheikh buys like Manchester. City. So how many years in of like I'm knowing like, this dude did did you find out that his three uncle years, is that three person? He invited me to his place. Okay. I went over. <laughs> Just go into the fucking president's house. <laughs> I went to house. the palace, bro. No way. I swear he picked me up. First of all, I, he, he, he comes, like, with a different car. I mean, it's like a voyage. It's not even a freaking a con- convoy or voyage. He comes with, like, a few, set, a few cars. And then he picked me up, and we go to his place. His palace is, oh, my God. It's so big, dude. It's, like, so they have, like, a whole, like, uh perimeter around it that's like it's gated in a way this is the first time going to your buddy's place yeah yeah because i mean he doesn't like he doesn't just bring people over when uh-huh. we were young we were like fourth grade so he just wanted you know his friends over yeah absolutely he invited a few of them no one showed up i went you know, i'm like i'm going dad didn't want me to go he's scared and he's like we're not scared he's just like worried where are you going <laughs> i told him the guy's name and stuff he's like what all right go <laughs> he heard go the last there, name. He's like, I'm hanging on. I go. <laughs> and dude, his house was enormous. So we we pull up to the gate, and so the cars like park in the f- like. Once you get in there, there's like a giant ass like gate, and mm-hmm. I'm talking giant like the size of one of our like halls. Just no, no, that's a little exaggerated. But it opens up. You pull in the car. There's like 20 cars right in the front. And then you get in a golf cart <laughs> to get to the house. No So you way. don't drive your car all the way there. You get in a golf cart. So we get in this golf cart, <laughs> and we get driven, like, straight up half a mile, like, inside the the gates all the way until you get to the And you're just a building. 10-year-old kid going over oh, this Oh, yeah, house. I'm, like, 12 or whatever. <laughs> and he's just, you know, he's, he's smiling, cracking up, and I'm like, dog, where are we going? He's like, to my place. <laughs> like, all right, going to your place. <laughs> like I look to the left, there's like a soccer field. I look to the right, there's like a tennis field, tennis court, <laughs> all sorts of crap. And then we get to his house, and there's like a giant building. There's two buildings, and then I understand later, Matrix. straight up, that like his dad had two wives. <laughs> one of them lived in one building. <laughs> <laughs> the other lived in the other building. Damn. So he cracked my. Why is it up? He didn't tell me that, but I kind of like figured it out that, over time. Figured that out over time because he said he had two moms that lived there. I'm like, all right, that's why there's like a giant building to the left, one to the right, and yeah. So we, I mean, it was just insane. You know, you can go into details, but 
a lot of it is vague at this point. But did you did you go over there like beyond that point? When we went in the house. I spent well, I mean, the like, whole day. Well, I mean, like like after that day, did you like hang out there <clears throat> at other points in time? Um, so I'll say that I didn't go over to his place again. Actually, we might have been there to, we went there for like birth, he had birthday party every year, I think. Okay. We'd go to that. But wow. he wouldn't like, he would do so many outdoor things, we don't even go to the house. It's huge, dude. You go, it's like a city. Like Probably each, like a little soccer field each, there, each like, uh, uh. Side like, of the like, bi- like a like, college campus, kind of. Yeah, or? like it's it's bigger than Missouri State's area. Like, Holy shit! But it's shit. not as many buildings, you know. Uh huh. But like, so you'd ha- we'd go there, and he'd usually do it on like where the grass pitches. He'd put like a you know, jumping castle, like pool, crap, like like that. Uh uh-huh. He'd have he'd literally bring Burger King, McDonald's, like Baskin Robbins to the house. Like they'd have stands. Like literally, like bro, we'd, we'd oh. be super like. Damn. We like we would wait all weekend to go and eat fast food because fast food was like special at that point there. Right. <laughs> He'd have these stands there. But yeah, that was like the um, only other time I went there. But yeah, I mean How long were you friends with this guy? Seven years. Really? Yeah. Wow. Six six, seven, seven. You guys like kinda of part ways in high school? Dude, yeah, I know. My dad moved me to like an American school. Like uh when I say American, it's just like it's just not it's a American, American curriculum. curriculum. Like, curriculums so okay yeah. and so and I that moved. started in high school yeah and he got so this is like your best friend in grade school for sure yeah oh, one of them i had a, crazy. I have two more yeah we were like a group of four but he was definitely one of them i didn't but see i was so young i didn't really think of that as like a big deal yeah right right it, it's cool and i mean what we were your just, parents we were, saying like have you talked to you about like have you talked about this since with your parents like how crazy that really was it's crazy but you're in a country that's small enough to where that's not insane you know it's like there's a million locals that's it Uh and the royal family is like in in thousands so you you can you know meet like people like that it's not impossible it's not like being in america and like chilling with trump's son or something right right even though this is actually like but still the probability is crazy it's crazy it's still super crazy but when you're when you put your kids in like that kind of school you're you're around all these kids that are like connected i mean if it wasn't him it'd be someone else like there was schools in dubai and abu Dhabi, no, and to. stuff they had I kids yeah yeah i went, went to the khan Sahib family the kasrush family Atsar family. yeah these guys college. are richer even they're not like they're, royal family but yeah. they're like i mean this, well more wealthy sh- yeah wealthy oh. like this guy this hamdan Atsar guy he had his own like little gaming like castle you can say they call it the majlis you know majlis <laughs> yeah, whatever yeah. Literally fucking huge screens everywhere and like, you know and he was what like grade four is? like probably. No, we were in a grade seven and eight. Eight seven and eight. And uh, he had literally like a whole gaming room where everyone used to go play Wolf Team. Just go that yeah. side. And like literally just black out. It's so funny games. if you if you like, know the right people. Amazing. If you know the right people, like you don't even have to spend a, a single dollar and you'll have. The most crazy experiences yeah, in the world. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To bring all these food, like <laughs> games, everything. I'm like, fuck it, yeah. <laughs> Dude, my one Big friend, fuck. he was nothing like special, but his dad was. He owned this uh, equestrian. Is that the horses? Word? Is that hor- yeah, yeah, equestrian slash shooting slash rugby slash something golf club. It was this facility that was huge, like insanely big, and it had four different like sectors. And it would you'd go in and there's like miles and miles of things, but because his dad owned it, we would literally go in and it's a really expensive like facility to be a member of because it had like golf, shooting, um, rugby and r- horse riding, so it's all these like nice, fancier things to do, and we would not like d- we just like I'd be with him so they'd know he's the kid <laughs> and we'd do whatever we want uh-huh. every day all day. Like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so you just have to have like a like a friend that like you know and then you just you're good <laughs> and just by just by chance making friends with people that you like genuinely yeah. like too. i mean he was my classmate he was another classmate but uh-huh. that's how you you meet him through a different way you can meet him in the playing soccer in the neighborhood yeah true yeah things like that you know usually not but not in the neighborhood that's but. insane <laughs> the only thing i can relate this to is like i feel like i came down here to mis- like most state and i don't know like pretty much everybody in like like I did the whole paternity thing and most of the people I met were like, you know, just like pretty much very similar to my exactly, life and yeah. stuff. And I, I find that cool. But like my friend went to Mizzou and 
he he had a pledge brother that was he had one who his dad owned a very large portion of the stocks in like the power bar like the protein bars oh really oh. yeah so he had one guy and i think See he had a here. place down in like miami and then a place in chicago yeah. and then maybe even san francisco too and then he had another friend in his pledge class that he was adopted adopted into the mcdonald's family and is going to <laughs> yeah, right? yeah i think and, it's more to me it's more impressive to be like super successful here than there just to, really that's me because They're here you have to like work there. work your butt off i think personally unless uh-huh. you get it like her heredity uh but i think there it's like it's ridiculous you're born into it all the time you right know shit. but here like i think it's super cool to like you know know these successful people because you can learn from what they did and how, what the path they took to success rather than like oh well my dad's this um yeah but i mean also like where we live you know we're in springfield you're not gonna expect much like let's be honest because if you go like let's say you grew up in hollywood in that area uh-huh. Beverly hills whatever you're probably gonna meet these people oh my dad's like tom cruise's brother more common, <laughs> more common yeah <laughs> something like yeah something cool well we have uh brad pitt it's pretty much yeah that's pretty cool that's yeah. pretty cool i think his brother here but like anybody who's like famous like that they're getting out of springfield yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> fair enough yeah it's funny because you guys are talking about this like it's like no big deal and it's just like it it's crazy well, to you, me. it's it's super cool at first but then you're like it's not it's not mine you know uh-huh. it's yeah, always yeah. gonna be like my friends and I mean, it's fun to live with, you know, and experience it. But at the end of the day, sure, you wanna, yeah. you wanna do your own thing, right? Oh, absolutely, like, absolutely. He was my friend, but now like it doesn't mean anything. I mean, uh, I'm sure if I saw him again, you know, uh, we'd we'd kick it. But like, at the end of the day, I have to work on myself. To, yeah, totally, you know? totally. Yeah, maybe the same thing here. Like, yeah, we had a rich friend here as well. But it's just, it's just really interesting. That's that's really yeah. It's a small world there. That's the thing. Like, yeah, it's a very small place. Okay. Very small very very small so it's like if you mention a name it can be known very easily like a family name or something back there as opposed to here like not really no like dubai i i know everyone everywhere a lot of money in a small place yeah yeah okay yeah it's just that's how it ends up feeling like but yeah I like that shirt. Thanks, dude. Reminds me of uh, Nickelodeon a little bit. I I love Nickelodeon. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah, this is my party shirt. Do you guys have any any, anything else to talk about? We talked about quite a few things. Yeah, Um, I feel like we did. I don't even know how long we went. I think two hours. Two hours. Oh shit. Yeah, you're right. Two hours. Seriously? No, like an hour forty-five almost. Yeah. Holy crap. Hour forty. Damn, that doesn't feel like it. Dude, we didn't, like, wow. I don't even think we got, if you start just going from touch one thing base. to the other, you can barely, like, we got yeah, touch based on. And a lot of things. On, yeah, on Dude, I literally thought we were things. going 45 minutes. <laughs> usually, usually I ask people, because I feel like I have a decent sense of, like, how long we're going. And I, I always ask people at the end, I'm like, how long do you think we went? And they'll be like. Oh, I don't know, twenty or like maybe like thirty minutes, and then I'd be like, no, hour and a half, bitch. Ha, I got you. But like <laughs> that got me, like you know. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, I mean, you got two people that you just got us rolling, talking about our childhood because we were both kind of raised in this, the same country. Not kind of, we were. We were. Uh-huh. And then we also have like quite a bit of uh, similar, you know, views of like back home, life here, international mm. like things, you know, that are going on. And so these topics can be talked about. Just like, get the ball rolling. Forever. That's that's what I was saying, like like <laughs> yesterday, because everybody always asks. They're like, "Hey, what are we gonna talk about? What topics do you have?" I'm like, honestly, like I go like with I the said, flow. Yeah, go with the flow. And, yeah. and a lot of people like have a hard time with that at first. Yeah. You guys, you guys were pretty cool about it, by the way. But I, yeah. a lot of people, I'll like tell that to, you, and they're like, "Well, can you at least write down like six or seven things?" <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no, trust me, like like. We if we yeah, get like yeah, two or three mercy. good topics, we'll we'll be good. Yeah, just missed a few beers. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. Had a few beers. Beers. I actually had some beers upstairs, and I was thinking about offering you guys, but I've completely <laughs> it completely slipped my mind. It's fine. I've been drinking too much. Dang, anyway. if we were having <laughs> a drink, this would you gotta work. See, at co- eight. conversations are nice, and then but when they become turn into like 
uh, debates, arguments, then they get like quite fun and they take time and get heated. Yeah. I, I, enjoy, I, I enjoy I enjoy debating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I I don't have any like viewpoints that I'm like super passionate about defending though. Yeah, you no, know? I don't. I I like to. It used to be like that for me, but when I moved to the states, I started becoming much more open to hearing both sides assessing it in a very neutral way and then like kind of like you know choose like seeing one side as as the more appropriate but i never like have a strong ass passion towards like one thing instantly totally like, absolutely you know, i used to though i used to like based on what i hear parents or family or friends or whatever it is or media instantly would put me in like that path but right now like i'll hear something like abortion you know Dude, that's literally what I was thinking. That's like, literally. Something like I have this, an opinion on. Like, I'm pro-choice personally. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah. but like, I see the pro-life side like yeah. so much. No, no, no. I so mean, it's not like, when you see when you hear how it how, what it what it is like the procedure of actually like aborting a kid, you, you're like, holy, okay, no, pro-life. But mm. then you think of the uh, like a woman and her body and uh, the the uh, the potential life that this kid might have the misery he might be born into. And then you're like, no, like you got to let the woman have her choice because and let's say that man isn't with her anymore. She has no support. This kid's going to be born into crap and it's not going to be good pretty much, which is like a shit ton of like kids like in the States. Absolutely. You know, that makes you instantly realize like, no, you, you can't like let that happen. As awful as, as it sounds. That's unethical like, in yeah. itself. I it's agree. Unethical. I agree. Why would you want someone to be born into the streets, like, and, and like. And not wanted. Like you pay that feeling of not being wanted their yeah, entire lives. Yeah, and not having, like. See, that's when I, I get pissed because here it's like your choice to, like, uh, to raise a kid, you know, like, in a good way versus, like, not have any sort of financial like stability to do anything about it like so what i mean is that like let's say you know you can barely support yourself mm -hmm. and why have a kid because if you have a kid this kid's gonna have an awful like childhood yeah unless some sort of mir miracle happens which is most likely not gonna happen and then we know this bad childhood for the kid is gonna pave the path for bad adulthood yeah most yeah. likely this bad adulthood is what creates a lot of the criminal like state in our country like in here mm -hmm. you know because you know since they're kids they're they're seeing like the bad lifestyle the the one where you have to like do shitty things to survive and in the parent shouldn't they have a choice on being able to make a 20-year commitment and realistically True. like, like True, a, having a kid is longer than a 20-year commitment it's not just even. that it's mm -hmm. like it's like a responsibility that you're you're committed to them, but you also have to like you can't just barely feed them to just live. Like you gotta you be gotta give you them gotta, a life. You gotta be full in. You gotta be all yeah. in. You gotta and be if all you're in. not ready, you, you know, you, if someone gets knocked up, like that's not fair on the woman. Is what mm -hmm. I mean, because the dude can dip out. Mm -hmm. He can be an unknown unless you know whatever. But yeah. The procedure is the one thing that really messes messed with me. I heard a doctor like describing it. Depends on what stage, but it's disgusting. It's but fucked. at the end of the it's day, you know, it's, it's it's not a live person. Like you know, he it's a cell, whatever it is. Until he develops into something, you know, with a beating heart. And ultimately, too, people are going to find a way. If somebody doesn't want something to happen, they are going to find a way to make it. Yeah. To terminate it, dude. Like. If you don't want it, to, that's the thing. You you might as well using just that keep that word. It. That did not feel good. Yeah, I didn't like, I didn't like <laughs> using that when it came out. I was but. gonna say. I mean, like, if if they don't want to do it the safe way with a procedure, they'll figure it out they'll themselves. They'll figure it out, and then they're they're they'll hurt themselves. You know, they'll yeah. do something crappy, unhealthy. The woman might could permanently damage their ovary, yeah, sticking a fucking whole clanger. <laughs> yeah, they die sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, if it's yeah. if it's known that you can get rid of it and people are inevitably going to do it, then they should have a choice, and they should have a choice to the the most uh, ethical and what's the word I'm looking for sanitary mm -hmm. and just hospitable way to do so. For sure, definitely. And I mean that that's one of the topics that like 
I look at and I uh, I look into it quite a bit and then I analyze on both ends then I like maybe can make a choice on what I'd like but there's some things where I just wrap it up I could care care less about there you go, there you go. <laughs> I didn't even wrap it up on the pod like let's wrap this thing up I was like, I was like oh okay cool if you want to end it <laughs> yeah, I mean, but no no I'm fine yeah uh, no honestly yeah man. I would I would agree that's hilarious because whenever we were talking about like seeing both sides and then like choosing like the most appropriate one yeah that's exactly what came to mind was abortion yeah i mean it's a hot topic now in missouri because they're i don't know trying to like uh make it illegal or whatever they're gonna try i think they might have done so they're successfully it. i banned it i think so i believe so i'm not 100% so there's like on a st louis one i think and that's the only one. Oh, really st louis abortion like. and also like think about this like if you had a kid right now at least me i would be like fuck yeah like i would literally be <laughs> fuck but like if i had a kid in maybe ten whatever years. yeah five ten years like whatever whatever i'm at that point in my life and i make that choice intentionally or if i'm at a point like i have like the finances to support i'm like you know what like yeah like it, it's literally the exact opposite reaction like mm-hmm. so that's my reaction Situation. is going to be such a such an influence on that kid's life mm-hmm. like you like you said because like why why would you if you have that choice then because your your mistake or your choice let's call it a choice but it's uh ultimately it can be a mistake determines that kid's like first decade or two of that's his unfair childhood. to the kid it's un- unfair it's unfair because you're putting you're raising a, a soul into crap like that shouldn't be happening especially in a country like here you know i and get it when they when it happens in africa and in third world countries where you know i get it there he's gonna be born into like a rough life like life regardless Mm -hmm. so but here like why but yeah this is it from mo and badri (laughs) (laughs) the 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 hand flip yeah (laughs) let's get famous cool you guys get any got any last words Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, time. I'm glad you guys came out. This Beautiful is cool. Time. This is I cool. Hope Springfield sees this. Oh, they will. Too many people. Too many for your liking, probably. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dang. Oh, well. Well, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wraps it up. Bam. Cool.